Hey, hello. So uh, today I'm going to explain getters and setters in JavaScript. Getters are special methods that make a property readable. Setters are special methods that make a property writable. We can use getters and setters to validate and modify a value when reading or writing a property. It helps with validation when creating an object or updating one of its properties. Here's an example. We will create a class of rectangle. We need a constructor. We will have two parameters, a width and a height. We will assign this dot width equals width, this dot height equals height. Now let's create a rectangle object. Const rectangle equals a new rectangle. For the width, let's say negative 1 million, something ridiculous. And for the height, I want the height to be pizza, the word pizza. Then let's console.log our rectangles width and the rectangles height. We have created a rectangle object with the width of negative 1 million and a height of pizza, which doesn't make any sense. We could use some validation when creating an object. We don't want people to enter in garbage values like negative a million or string when we're expecting a positive number for the width or height. That's where getters and setters come in. We'll begin with setters. When setting one of these properties, either initially through a constructor or updating one of them later, such as setting the width or height equal to some value, we can go through a setter first. Outside of our constructor, we will set a property will begin with width. This will be a special type of method. The parameter will be new width. What do we want to check before assigning this property? Using an if statement, let's check to see if the new width that the user sends us is greater than zero. If it is, we will assign this dot underscore width. Using an underscore prefix, it tells other developers that this is a private property. You shouldn't touch it at all. You could say that this private property of width is different than our standard width property. We will assign the private property of width equal to the new width we receive. Else, let's console.error, not log, we'll use error this time. Width must be a positive number. All right, let's see what happens. Width must be a positive number, and our width is currently undefined, which is good. Okay, let's do this with height. Let's copy our setter for width, paste it, but change every instance of width to be height. Set height new height. Be sure to use that camel case naming convention. If new height is greater than zero, assign the private property of height equal to the new height. Else, console.error, height must be a positive number. And there we go, that worked. Width must be a positive number, and height must be a positive number. Our width and height are currently undefined. In order to set the width and height, we have to pass in a positive number. For the width, I will say three. For the width, four. Now when we access width and height, those numbers still aren't showing up. That's because these properties are writable via setters, but they're not readable. That's where getters come in. We'll create two getters. One for width, we'll need to use the get keyword, get width. This will be another type of method. All we're going to do is return this private width. And that appeared to work. We have three for the width. Let's do so with the height. We will return this private height. We have three and four. Now by using setters, we can even update those values later. Let's take our rectangles width, set that equal to be five. Take the height, 
set it equal to be 6. And that also appears to work. But again, if I try and update those values to some garbage values like negative a million and the word pizza, we get those errors again. And our object retains its initial values that we previously assigned it, 3 and 4. With getters, we can even use the property accessor, that dot, to access a property that doesn't necessarily exist. For example, we will get area. We'll perform a calculation. We will return this private width times this private height. So now we can access area as if it was a property. We have 3 for the width, height 4. Our width times our height gives us an area of 12. Our area isn't a property technically, it's not found within our constructor, but we can access it as if it was a property with a getter. With getters, you can even add additional logic. I would like to preserve the initial values of our width and height. When I return their value, I will use the to fixed method to give each of these a precision of 1. Let's do that with the width, the height, and the area, but that's going to be a little more complex. We'll enclose width times height, then add to fixed 1. And why stop there? I'll add centimeters to the end of each. I'll use a template string, add a placeholder, then add cm for centimeters, 3.0 cm, and the area. Twelve point zero centimeters. Let's make that centimeters squared because it's area technically. When you're assigning values, even when you're initially creating an object, you can go through the setters for input validation. When you retrieve values and try and read them, you can add additional logic too. Let's go over a second example. We will create a class of person. We need a constructor. We will accept a first name last name, and an age. This dot first name equals first name. This dot last name equals last name. This dot age equals age. Let's construct a person, const person equals new person. Let's enter in some values that don't make sense. The person's first name will be the number 420. Their last name is the number 69. Their age is the word pizza. Let's console.log our person object's first name, which is the number 420. Their last name, 69, and their age. The word pizza. We need to validate this input before assigning the properties. That's why we need setters. We will set the first name property. This is a special type of method. The parameter is going to be a new first name. We need to be sure that this value passed in is a string and the length is greater than zero. We could write something like this. We need an if statement. Let's check the type of our new first name. Is it strictly equal to a string? And is our new first name's length property greater than zero? If all of that checks out, we will assign this private first name equal to the new first name we receive. Else, let's console.error. First name must be a non-empty string. Let's see if this worked. I'm going to save. First name must be a non-empty string, and currently our first name is undefined. Okay, that worked. Let's copy our setter for our first name, paste it, change every instance of first name to last name. New last name 
check if the type of our last name is equal to a string and if our new last name, the length of it, is greater than zero. If it is, assign the private last name property equal to the new last name. Else, last name must be a non-empty string. That also worked. Our first name and last name are undefined. Let's do this with age. Set our age. The parameter is going to be new age. Using an if statement, is the type of new age strictly equal to a data type of number? And is our new age greater than or equal to zero? If it is, take this private age equals our new age. Else, we're going to console.error. Age must be a non-negative number. We can no longer assign pizza for our age, unfortunately. All right, we have our setter set up. Now let's work on the getters. Let's assign some legitimate values. For the first name, SpongeBob. Last name, SquarePants. Age, 30. We don't have those errors anymore. That means they're set, but those properties aren't readable. That's why we need getters. Let's get the first name. Get first name. Return this private first name. There's SpongeBob, his first name. Get last name. Return this private last name. There's his last name. Let's create a getter for a full name too. Let's console.log a full name, even though we have no property for that. That's undefined. We'll use a getter to mimic a full name property by just combining the first name and the last name properties. Get full name return. I'm going to use some string concatenation. This private first name plus a space character. This private last name. And there's his full name, SpongeBob SquarePants. And the age. Get age return this private age. And SpongeBob is 30. All right, everybody, those are getters and setters. Getters are special methods that make a property readable. Setters are special methods that make a property writable. By using a combination of both, we can validate and modify a value when reading or writing a property. And well, everybody, those are getters and setters in JavaScript.